So hello, Larry's Laminate. Um, we're super excited to be presenting to you today. Thank you for joining us. And we are Star Capital. We'll be evaluating your strategic alternatives should you choose us as your investment bank. Super excited to get started. Uh, my name is Lila Abershad. I'm the managing director of M&A here at Star Capital, and I have 15 years of financial advisory experience. Uh, my name is Brandon Gaffigan. I'm the managing director of the Industrials Group, and I have 13 years of financial advisory experience. My name is Nikita Davidenko. I'm the VP of the M&A Group, and I have seven years of financial advisory experience. Hello, my name is Christopher Min, and I'm the VP of the M&A Group with six years of financial experience. And I'm Miles Kuslowski. I'm also a VP of M&A, and I have eight years of financial experience. Moving forward, we'll be looking at an outlook of Star Capital as well as Larry's Laminate, and we'll be determining a fair value. And we'll be looking at whether the management buyout is more feasible or the stepstone acquisition is more feasible, whether selling to a private equity firm is better. And we'd be evaluating your opportunities based on a qualitative and quantitative analysis, and then we'd be offering our professional recommendation. So we have an average of 30 plus transactions closed annually and more than $5 billion in deal volume. And we've dealt successfully with Larry's Laminate's uh, comparables, such as Mohawk, Quantix, and Fortune Brands. And should you choose us as your investment bank to go with, we have an incredible team here. We have five dedicated bankers, all itching to get started and waiting. Yeah. <laughs> so to go over some topics for discussion. Today, we are brought here today because Larry has indicated an interest in selling Larry's laminate through an expedited process, foregoing the traditional laminate process, really trying to uh, uh, upstage this, this process to get this done. And so, Stepstone Capital Partner has shown initial, initial interest in acquiring LL, and we'll be discussing the valuation and that proposal. Uh, next, we have John and Sheila, who, which would like to purchase LNL directly from Larry in a management buyout. And we'll be discussing uh, the pros and cons to that uh, buyout as well. And then one point of topic for discussion um, is that public market valuations have drastically declined in the last 12 months. So we'll be looking into how we can factor that into um, our valuation for the company and what that means for LNL going into the future. Um, and lastly, Star Capital will seek to balance the, the shareholder interest regarding value, timeliness, and of course the legacy of the company. So we think that Larry Lamon has an incredible growth profile going into the future that we're really excited about. Right? We can see that um, in the past five years, including our 2023 and 2024 projections, that we estimate a, a 5.25 sales CAGR. Um, but what's even more shocking is that the laminated products manufacturing industry is only expected to grow at 1.1%. And so this, this sales growth is something that will get a lot of people excited um, uh, going into the future, not just Stepstone. Right? And then looking into the EBITDA CAGR, we can see that outpaces our sales growth. And that's mainly due to the expected cost declines that we're going to be seeing in our raw materials such as resin or petrochemicals that will be fueling that bottom line growth. So going back to Brad and Gadigan, who's going to, or sorry, Miles, who's going to be uh, presenting the determination of fair value. Yeah, so our first step in this valuation was just to try and consider the equity value of Larry's Laminate. Uh, this gives us a range of 80 to 85 million. And normally we know that you would see the enterprise value, which includes debt, but we wanted to show you the equity value. because This is how much you'll actually be receiving as shareholders of Larry's Laminate. So we first started uh, by looking at Larry's Laminate on a net leverage buyout basis. Uh, this is what a private equity firm like Stepstone would be able to pay. Uh, we use multiples of eight and a half to nine and a half uh, because we talk about soon, but we believe their multiples are a little low. This gives us a valuation of 77 to 88 million. Uh, we next looked at a discounted cash flow model, which is factoring into our fair value, but this was assuming a little higher of a multiple, uh, and this was also assuming a 12% weighted average cost of capital. Uh, this gives us a valuation of 83 to 95 million. Uh, next, we wanted to look at public comparable companies. So we've looked through the industry. We've identified a couple similar companies, albeit they're a little bit bigger than Larry's Laminate. So they're, and additionally, right now with public markets being a little lower, uh, they're trading at a little lower multiple than we believe Larry's Laminate to be worth. Uh, some of them even have negative income growth right now. So we've adjusted 
That multiple up a little bit in our fair value. Uh, that's giving us a range of 65 to 77 million, but we believe that's again a little bit low. We believe really one of the best measures of the value of Larry's laminate is the transaction comparable model because this is where the market's trading at right now for companies that are similar to yours. Uh, the sample we used was a little bit bigger. Uh, there were companies in it that were bigger than Larry's laminate. We discounted this multiple by seven and a half percent. So this gives us a similar range to the LBO of 77 to 88 million. Uh, all this being said, the fair value we believe of Larry's Limited is somewhere between 80 to 85 million on an equity basis. Uh, so first of all, we wanna look at the two different options you're presented with today. Uh, we wanna look at selling to Stepstone Capital Partners, which we believe will generate 77 to 88 million dollars for shareholders in equity. Uh, Sorry. Go back to that point, you in equity, how does that factor in the debt that, that I have yeah. today? So you're gonna, they're gonna pay you for your debt, uh, which is about 22 million of net debt, 21.8 million, but they're gonna pay for the entire enterprise value. Uh, we just wanted to present you how much you'd actually receive. So as Larry, you'd receive 70% uh, of that range. Uh, that's excluding debt. So that, yeah, your debt would already be paid for. We just didn't want to present you with a higher value because we need to make sure that your debt comes out of the total enterprise value. So the buyer would be paying that range plus. Plus 22 million, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so this is just on an equity basis. Um, this is after debt. So on your prior page, you had 80, 85 million as the enterprise value, right? Uh, Actually, we could go back. That was actually the equity value. We just normally we would present enterprise value, but in this case, since it's a private company, we wanted to show you just the equity valuation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this this would be a similar result to the last slide to our football field of, of the seventy-seven to eighty-eight million dollar range, just for the equity, uh, subtracting out your debt, which is again about twenty-two million. Uh, First, we, we know there are some considerations about the rolled equity uh, and how much you'd actually have to put into the new company. Uh, so we made a table to model this. Right now, uh, based on a nine and a half times multiple, you've got an equity value of 88 million. Uh, we can see that Larry has about $60 million of that. John has uh, about 18, and Sheila has $9 million of that. After the transaction though, Stepstone would have 75% of the, the post-transaction equity. Uh, and you would have to roll over a little bit. Larry today, though, would receive $50 million. Uh, and he'd have to roll over about $10 million of the new company. Uh, John would receive about $12 million. I can't see very well, so I'm just looking over there. Uh, and then Sheila would receive a little bit less. Uh, but you would have to roll some equity over into the new company. I'll, though it would only be about 20% of your total payout. So what are the benefits of selling the Stepstone right now? Uh, you would receive a big cash payout right away. Uh, you would take a lot of money off the table and you would receive the money right now. You would have to roll some equity, but we believe that's minor. Uh, you do want to stay on with Stepstone and make sure the company transitions properly uh, because there is a misconception that some of these private equity firms will come in and strip the business, uh, but really that's not how it is with most firms nowadays. Uh, they want to help you grow revenues. They don't want to just come in and cut all of your costs. So you'll want to stay on just for a year or two, uh, make sure that that transition is smooth. Uh, and one other benefit is Stepstone, we believe, could pay a little bit higher of a multiple. Uh, we even think they could go to nine and a half times EBITDA uh, based on the transaction comps. So. What does that translate to, uh, pretend I'm Larry, what does that yeah, translate so to? That's, uh, to me, if you raise the price and get more money, what does that mean to me personally? Yeah, so right now, uh, if you raise the price, you would be getting the 60 million. Those multiples on the top uh, left hand of the table are based on a, on a higher multiple uh, that Stepstone would be willing to pay. So you would receive substantially less if you couldn't get over the eight times range, but we believe as your advisors that we can get you higher than that range. Uh, so we want to get you the most money possible, really. Did you, did you answer my question? Yeah, so you would get uh, 
probably between 10 to 20 million more dollars uh, with Perfect. a higher range. Thank you. Yeah. So then just some risks uh, and considerations of this. Uh, selling the Stepstone, you'd be giving up control in the new company. Uh, we want to make sure just this is highlighted to you because Stepstone, again, as you can see, would own 75% of the post transaction equity. Uh, you wouldn't receive your entire payout today, which is in the rolled equity table. Uh, we can talk more in depth about that too if you'd like. And Larry would have to stay on at LNL for another one to two years. We know that Larry has indicated, uh, you've indicated that you want to retire and be done with the business. We've, we've talked to different sources uh, and we've seen in our past transactions that sometimes these advisory roles are just a couple meetings a year. So we really don't believe that it would be strenuous work for you. We believe it'd be the best option for you to ensure a smooth transition uh, and to help the company grow in the future. And I'll pass it off to Brandon to talk more about your second option. Yeah, so the second option, excuse me, <clears throat> is the management buyout of Larry from John and Sheila. Uh, so just to make sure we're all on the same page, the sources of capital for this structure is 20 million of bank debt with an 11.5% interest rate, 20 million from friends and family, that would be on equity, uh, 5 million from John and Sheila of their own capital, and then a 5 million seller's note to Larry with a 6% interest rate paid out over five years. Um, so the biggest risk associated with this that we identified or that the friends and family would own a majority of the company if this management buyout were to take place. Um, and seeing that they have not been involved in the company up to this point, we don't think that that's necessarily something that we should take onto the table as in the current state. Uh, and John and Sheila with that would also own a minority of the company. Uh, and they won't have the substantially large ownership either. And also the several outsiders with no industry experience will be coming in and have a large voting power within the company. And we just don't see that as the best feasible option for you at this point. Uh, and this leads to often a misalignment of shareholders' interests when there's multiple groups fighting for different things. Uh, so if I can take your attention to the top table, this is specific to the company and to Larry. So you can see on the left bar, that represents the equity value of the company if we were to do a sale to someone like Stepstone. Um, so that would be about 80 million of value, but Larry's portion of that would be about uh, 58 million. And if we were to do the management buyout, that would drop substantially by about 37 million of uncaptured value because this payout would be 70% of the equity value in that situation, which is only about 21 million. So we think for this reason, just to get Larry as much value as possible, uh, the management buyout doesn't make too much sense at this time. And can you explain why he's still just getting 70%? In the management buyout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there, uh, since John and Sheila own the other 30%, uh, he's just going to receive his share for the 70%. But are they paying themselves or are they just leaving their share in? Yeah, Wouldn't they just value his piece? Uh, we've we've seen from uh, what you provided us that they would roll over their already existing equity into the new company. So they'll give a little bit of money to themselves, but they'll really just be rolling it into the new company. Go back a second. So. What's the equity being sold for in the management buyout? Who's being bought out? Larry. Larry's 70%, right? Mm -hmm. But the 30% is already owned in the business and carries over. I'm failing to understand the giant decrease from the LBO scenario to the MBO scenario. Yeah, so that's based on the multiple that the managed buyout would imply. So the LBO draft that you see there is based off of that 8.5 to 9.5 multiple that we showed in the equity valuation slide um, versus that multiple drop to around 5 in the management buyout. So that just shows the difference in his equity portion under those two circumstances. Yeah, and it really comes down to that Stepstone can just bring more money to the table. Uh, then John and Sheila are able to provide. They're just a bigger company. They have more capital sources, uh, so they can pay more. That's really what it comes down to than John and Sheila. What's happening to the, uh, in this scenario, what's happening to the existing debt? Yeah, so we're paying it off. Uh, we're paying it off first thing and the management buyout. When you say paying it off first thing, is that paid off before the transaction closes or paid off during the transaction yeah, we're paying that off during the transaction. Okay, so I'm starting, the, the capital structure will start with the existing 22 million, whatever the number is, of debt that we currently have. Yeah. And you're, again, presenting an equity valuation, just as you did before, 
with the PE growth. So now I'm going to have, we'll have 20 million of exi 20 plus of existing debt, and then we'll have the borrowing of 20 million additional debt, and then we'll have the note. Yeah. I just want to. Yeah. So this, yeah, this is also um, just which after I, that. Then. Which I could, if in part gets to the lower, in your minds, the lower payout to Larry. Yeah, yeah, that's really when it, what we wanted to show is just how much you'd actually receive in compensation. Yeah, and sorry, I'm still confused. So why isn't he ending up with $45 million if they're just buying his portion of the equity? Yeah, well, we so we've been looking uh, at the debt you already have existing. Uh, we would need to dig further into this upon diligence, but we believe that you couldn't maintain that amount of debt because you'd really be over leveraging the company. Um, so if he received the whole 45 million, there's still 22 million roughly of existing debt. So you've got to pay that off, or otherwise you'll be in a lot worse of a position just based on too much debt. Um, so that's why he wouldn't receive that whole payout of all the new capital sources because there's already there's, that's really based on just how much debt is already in the company. So yeah, now we're just going to move on to sort of evaluating the alternatives, both the management buyout and the uh, stepstone sale, um, both from a qualitative and a quantitative standpoint. Um, so just to go over some of the pros and cons of each of those options, uh, for the sale to stepstone, one of some of the pros would be that shareholders like John and Sheila get to roll their transaction proceeds in line with Larry's value expectations uh, with an attractive multiple and a value add-on with potential room for growth uh, and to leverage even further. Uh, some of the cons, though, is that Larry, as we said, would have to remain in an advisory role for one to two years, and we know that's not necessarily ideal for you as you're looking to get out of the company as soon as possible. Um, and Stepstone would indicate a strong interest in Larry to roll over a portion of his equity, but based on our valuation, he would still get to keep $50 million in his pocket, uh, but he would still have some of the legacy aspects of that because he gets to keep uh, a substantial portion of his equity in the new business to have some sort of voting power and things like that. Uh, so with the management buyout, some of the pros are that the funding efforts that John and Sheila went through, the funding efforts that John and Sheila went mm -hmm. through show a great motivation for success uh, and a lot of the different people that they raised uh, the capital from. And Larry exits to fully retire from LNO. But one of the cons of that is uh, that the new leadership changes bring in um, with no relevant industry experience as we touched on before. And the financial stress created by the new debt and the equity sources could be pretty substantial. And I'll pass it off to Nikita to go over some of the quantitative aspects. So what is the total debt in the management buyout then? Yeah, so including all the different sources, it would be uh, 25 million of debt that you'd be adding. The other part would be equity. Right, so, so the 25 million you're saying that just um, to, when you're two and a half turns 11, right? So I'm just saying, you're saying that's a financial stress scenario? Uh, we're saying that if, we're saying that the debt really, um, if you left the old debt on the company, if you didn't pay that off, that would be creating financial stress. Uh, we just don't want you to have a bunch of outside owners, unless that's really what you want to do, but we're nervous about the equity of all the friends and family, how that's going to uh, manage the company. Yeah. Well, we have $22 million in debt today, right? Yeah. So we're swapping out 22 for twenty million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in his scenario, yeah, he's swapping it out. He's paying it off and then putting new stuff on it. I don't think so. I don't think they think so. No, that, that's our, our thought at first. We would need to look more at the debt covenants, but that's what we were thinking right now. Isn't What's a normal Stepstone thing putting in four and a half, isn't in their proposal, isn't it four and a half to four and a quarter times debt? Yeah, they're putting in four and a quarter times. So that would be what, like 45 million? How yeah. is that different? Uh, Why is that doable, but the 20, the existing debt plus the incremental 20 is not doable. Yeah, though they're, they're paying a higher value, um, so there's more equity left in the company. Uh, we got a wrap up. Yeah. Final comments. Yeah, let's just go over our recommendation yeah. here. So moving on to our recommendation, our uh, final recommendation is to sell to Stepstone. Um, they're already giving the seven to eight times multiple range, but we do see more value, so we will look to negotiate a higher value there, um, in addition to potentially seeing Larry cash out and John and Sheila rolling over more equity as they have shown interest in doing so. And since we do see a lot of value here, we're willing to provide more information to Stepstone to sharpen their pencil. But if we're not kind of 
getting towards that higher multiple of 8.5 that we could see, we are also open to starting a transaction process and looking for um, a potential buyer out of a range of roughly 15 to 20 um, high probability strategic and private equity firms that we have strong existing relationships with. Um, Larry, you do want an expedited press process, so we want to make this as quick as possible and as easy as possible for you. So this is just a rough layout of roughly how the, the timeline would look, um, ultimately leading to finding the best client on the market. Um, if we, again, if we are not able to uh, fully get what we want from Stepstone, we just want to maximize the value for you guys and we see that there could be other options there as well. Um, for some of the general fee structures, these are just industry standards um, where Larry's Lamina would be paying us 2% of the enterprise value with legal and accounting fees of around 200K. And then ultimately for any sorts of expenses that may um, come up during this transaction. Thank you so much for your guys' time. We're very excited to potentially work with you and um, we're looking forward to moving on from here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.